faith story. It's kind of wild. But let's start with a question. What do Charles Manson, Allen Ginsberg, the Unabomber, and my Uncle Bob, who lives off of the grid, all have in common? They all claim that they were test subjects of the government's secret mind control experiments. I didn't say it, they did, okay? So if you're interested in conspiracy theories like myself, then you are probably familiar with the big old daddy conspiracy himself, MK Ultra. Well, to make it clear, this is no theory, friends. What if I told you the government was testing on thousands of unwilling patients all over the country in the hopes to achieve mind control? So let's go on a journey and talk about some juicy government goss and maybe understand how the hell we got to that point. Let's start with a guy named Frank Olson. Now, Frank was a little smarty pants, okay? He was a biological warfare scientist. And then in 1953, the CIA reached out to him in hopes to work together and develop some kind of new technology they wanted to use. Frank agrees, and the CIA tells him that they really want to develop some like kind of mind control technology, and Frank would be the best one to do that. I know, already I can tell I'm losing you, but they really did hire someone to develop actual mind control technology. I'm not just saying that. At this time, the CIA was wondering, hey, can we get control of an individual to the point where they will do like whatever we want? and then they won't remember any of it. Now, Frank was passionate about his new project. He wanted to help the CIA and keep America strong. But as time went on, Frank was noticing something a little suspicious going on. Day after day, he would come into work and see that the CIA was, you know, maybe abusing their power. There was one instance where Frank witnessed a few interrogations that were a little inhumane. Then there was another time when he started to see the test subjects being tortured extensively. Frank, he put his foot down and decided to say something. And he's like, hey, you guys, you guys, I don't think this is a good idea, what you're doing. He gets invited to a men's retreat and he's like, oh my God, cool, men's retreat, bonding with the coworkers, love that. So Frank gets to the retreat and he's handed a drink. And they're like, here, you're thirsty, Frankie? And he's like, oh my God, yeah, so thirsty, you know? So he's taking a drink as you do. And some time goes by and Frank notices that he's feeling a little, he's feeling a little funky, you know? The walls all of a sudden just start melting. The piano in the corner is speaking Mandarin. He can smell the color purple. And he's like, you know, something ain't right here. Something ain't right. And that's when it was announced to everyone in the room, like an announcement was made. Pay attention, everybody. And they're like, hey, so your drinks were actually laced with it was their turn to be the test subjects. It led to Frank having a very bad trip. <laughs> oh yeah. Luckily for him, he makes it out. And once he leaves the men's retreat, he has this feeling of great sadness. How could these people he trusted and worked for turn the tables and now treat him like a test subject? So days go by, Frank was just feeling worse and worse. He couldn't sleep, he couldn't concentrate, and he was having trouble spelling words. Now, these were things he could easily do before this little men's retreat. Now, was this all because of the he was given, question mark? You know, it was suggested to him that he be hospitalized, which Frank agrees to. And the hospital that the hospital that was recommended to him, it was out of town. And they only checked patients in during the morning. So Frank, his doctor, and a CIA coworker who were there to like assist Frank and make sure he gets checked into the hotel the night before and then take him to the doctor's or the hospital the next day. So they're all there, there's the three of them. They go to the hotel. The three of them that night have dinner and Frank told the CIA agent that he was looking forward to his hospitalization. So the night comes to an end. Frank goes back to his hotel room. What happens next, my friends? Well, it's different depending on who you ask. So Frank never made it to the hospital the next day because he allegedly jumped out of the hotel window and fell to his death, which was then labeled a suicide. But here's what many think really happened. You see, the night before Frank's quote unquote suicide, a phone call was made from his hotel room. This phone call was made to somebody within the CIA. And allegedly this caller wanted to let them know Frank had died. Now. That's very unusual because Frank hadn't died yet, unless that person making the call 
was a wizard or something, you know? It just really doesn't make any sense. Another thing that was very unusual was that Frank's son asked for a second autopsy to be performed because he too was like feeling a little unsure about this suicide situation. So when the second autopsy came through, it found out that Frank had no facial scarring or cuts associated with jumping out of a window. In fact, there were signs he had damage suggesting he had been hit directly in the head. Now, I don't know about you, but when you jump out of a window, it's gonna look like you jumped out of a window, you know? Like the type of damage that comes with jumping out of a window, it would be way more severe. And it wasn't just lining up with this head trauma that, that he had. So what does it all mean? Let's dive into these experiments and try to figure out what Frank saw. Picture this, it's the late 1940s and the Americans are scared of Russia and Korea. Now, Americans were watching Russia, who at this time, they were um, economically strong. And also they had a very big military. They also see they're successfully testing nuclear bombs. So America is thinking to themselves like, that should have been us. You know, we should have, we should be making these bombs. They're feeling threatened. Like, why aren't we number one? We're America. We're supposed to be number one. American soldiers who were captured by the Koreans, because remember, we're in war with them, they returned to America and they were like, hey, the bad guys really aren't that bad. They're running a pretty cool show over there. So the CIA is listening to these guys like, what? This isn't very American of them. You can't think or say that about our enemies. They must have been brainwashed. Obviously, jump into wild conclusions, but that's exactly what they were thinking. How dare you feel bad for the bad guys? You're not supposed to have feelings. And at this moment, the CIA decided, if they're gonna do mind control, we're gonna do mind control, but 10 times better. When the CIA had stumbled upon, they were sure, they were sure they had found their mind control answer. On top of that, they didn't want Russia or any other country to get their hands on this magic before they could. So they decide, the CIA, to like, hey, what if we just bought all of the, I'm, I'm not talking most of it, I'm talking about all of it. And that's exactly what they did. The CIA bought 100 million doses of from the Swiss lab. The man behind this large transaction, you ask? Well, his name was Sidney Gottlieb. You see, Sidney had some big plans for how could be used and he was willing to do whatever it took to get what he wanted. Sid was put in charge of a new project called MK Ultra. Sid was excited about this new opportunity. Now Sydney would be in charge of approving and distributing across the country to different colleges and hospitals in hopes to find volunteers to test the on. The experiments were performed all over the country that were also financed by the CIA. So just a few miles away from the CIA headquarters is a place called Georgetown University, filled with many students who I'm sure uh, they could test on. So the CIA tried to establish a secret mind control research center within the university. The CIA told the test subjects that they were just trying to make a that would help them not get but also like give you a permanent high for the rest of your life. So many participated in these trials without the full understanding of what it was for, who it was for, and why they were even doing it in the first place. The goal of these tests was just to see if it was possible to control their impulses and their thoughts. So there really wasn't like a conclusive ending. They just kind of like, again, wanted to see what would happen. And all that really did happen was that became a huge hit in colleges everywhere. The CIA was willing to let anyone try anything if it meant they could have more super secret agents. Another example that was financed by the CIA was a project led by a world famous and well-respected doctor and psychiatrist named Dr. Ewan Cameron. Mm. Now, Dr. Cameron, he was very interested in something called de-patterning. It has nothing to do with quilts, but instead he believed it would allow him to erase a person's mind and replace it with whatever type of behavior you wanted. Dr. Cameron already worked with a wide variety of patients that suffered from things like postpartum depression or psychological issues. So he thinks they are the perfect test dummies to give to. His goal was to break down your behavioral patterns, and the way he did this was by trying extremely experimental tactics. 
One of them being electroshock therapy, where they literally electrocuted your brain. Yeah. You're not supposed to do this more than a couple times a week at most, okay? And this doctor was doing it to people multiple times a day. He also used something called a sleep room. A sleep room was where they put patients in a induced coma, but in a room with no lights and no windows. So over the speaker, there would be an endless recording repeating the same messages over and over and over again, just speaking to the patient's subconscious, attempting to reprogram new behaviors deep into the brain. Yes, cut your bangs, you will look amazing. Do it right now, you want bangs, yeah. Now the goal, the goal was to eventually be able to control people by implanting new motivations and skills into their brain. So in a couple of cases, this went on for months with the longest sessions being anywhere between 39 and 65 days. Dr. Cameron would retire at some point in the 1960s and the person who replaced him concluded that nothing was concluded. The only takeaway they got from the follow-up study was that 60% of Cameron's patients experienced amnesia for anywhere from six months to 10 years. Later on, when the media questioned the Allen Institute on like why in the hell they were running these experiments in the first place, they were like, well, really, we're the victims here, okay? We're the real victims. But that didn't mean Sidney from the CIA was going to give up easy. He still had lots of ideas up his sleeve to achieve the overall goal of mind control. Now, Sidney had another idea in mind, another project, one that he would call Midnight Climax. Now this one's fun. So they would like set up these places called safe houses in New York and San Francisco. And Sidney couldn't do it all alone, he needed help. That's when he brought in a former narcotics agent and a bigwig CIA like guy named George Hunter White. And this guy was gonna help facilitate the study. The CIA bought a bunch of little apartments, they furnished them, and then they would set up a two-way mirror in the room. And then they would bring in local workers to help with this project. They wanted these rooms to look super normal, but secretly were designed to allow for experimentation and observation. They paid the workers to lure Johns into these rooms, then offered them something to drink. And the Johns, they had no idea that these drinks were laced with The part where this gets even more freaky is that behind the two-way mirror, there was someone watching the whole time. Yeah, the whole time. No serious results ever came out of this experiment. It honestly sounded like a personal interest just funded by the CIA if you ask me, but no one's asking me right now. So the thing is, no one really knows when MK Ultra came to an end, but officially, quote unquote, it ended in 1973, but it could still be going on now for all we know, and nobody really knows the full extent of it. So if your uncle Bob starts rambling about men in suits shoving him into the back of a truck, or that like the government is watching him or something, you know, I guess maybe like actually believe him. MK Ultra actually ended up accomplishing nothing other than ruining people's lives and wasting tax dollars. And then eventually the Supreme Court ruled that it was absolutely unacceptable for the CIA to ever conduct experiments on Americans without knowledge or consent. Which, hey, that's kind of cool, I guess. <laughs> Thank you, thank 